I mean, I believe that the cellular phone is safe. Thomas Wheeler is the president of the cell phone industry's trade group in Washington, D.C. Our industry has gone out and aggressively asked the question, can we find a problem? And the answer that has come back is that there is nothing that has come up in the research that suggests that there is a linkage between the use of a wireless phone and health effects. Nonsense. In a word, simple. Nonsense. Dr. Lewis Slesson is the editor of Microwave News, a widely read and influential trade newsletter, which tracks the cell phone business and frequently criticizes what Slesson says is the industry's attempt to ignore or spin troublesome scientific findings. This is about PR, not about science. There's research from Australia, there's research from England, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Germany, all pointing in a direction Mr. Wheeler doesn't want to look. Essentially, we have reports of headaches, of cancer, of changes in blood pressure, changes in sleeping patterns. Among the most recent work, that of this Swedish doctor, Leonard Hardell, who studied phone habits of brain tumor patients. His pilot study was nowhere near big enough to be scientifically conclusive, but enough for Dr. Hardell to recommend that cell phone users take steps to minimize their exposure and be especially cautious about children using cell phones. There is no smoking gun. We don't know that they're unsafe, but there is tons of information from all over the world showing a problem. But there's no sign the cell phone industry sees it that way. A whole new way to use your wireless phone. If anything, the industry's current ad campaigns encourage consumers, even children, hey Dad, I need to, ride home. to use cell phones much more than they do now. Talk all you want, your family. I'm a big bucket guy. Use it how much, you say? I mean, I'd buy the, uh, the big bucket of minutes, which is, uh, what, 1,600 minutes, and, uh, and then go beyond that. The industry's Thomas Wheeler says there's no reason to cut back cell phone use, and that the focus in studies like Dr. Hardell's should be on the positive finding. Dr. Hardell, in his study, says that he could not find a link between the use of a wireless phone epidemiologically and, and, and brain cancer. What he did find was an interesting handedness issue. Interesting. And he says, based on his findings, he would recommend people use cell phones as little as possible. And I, my question to you is, would you agree with that advice? I think that, that it is, there is a preponderance of evidence that there is not a linkage between the use of wireless phones and health effects. This is hardly the first time health concerns have been raised about cellular phones. Can you recognize this as being the phone you use? Yes, I do. Is this the phone? Yes. Six weeks after this videotape deposition in 1993, Susie Raynard of Tampa, Florida, died of brain cancer. Her husband, David, claiming his wife's cancer was caused by her cell phone. The tumor was exactly in the pattern of the antenna. David Reynard went on to almost single-handedly create a national scare when he filed a lawsuit and went public with his allegations. Well, we're, we're suing the carrier, we're suing the manufacturer. There was great alarm on Wall Street. And even though Reynard's lawsuit was later thrown out by a judge for a lack of reliable scientific evidence, it left the cell phone industry with a huge public relations problem. So what our industry is announcing here today and led to the announcement of a $25 million industry research program to be run by Dr. George Carlo, a public health consultant, who was labeled then by some as a kind of scientific shill for the cell phone industry. Do you think they thought they had bought you? I, I hope that they didn't, but I think that they probably did. And now, after six years of running the industry's research program, Dr. Carlo has come to a surprising conclusion, forcing him, he says, to break ranks with the industry, to add his voice to those increasingly concerned about the safety of cell phones. We've moved into an area where we now have some direct evidence of possible harm from cellular phones. In a revealing interview of 2020, Dr. Carlo said he felt he had no choice but to blow the whistle and what he says has been going on behind the scenes. The industry had uh, come out uh, right after that program and said there are thousands of studies that uh, prove that uh, wireless phones are safe. And the fact was that there were no studies that were directly relevant. Meaning no studies directly relevant to cell phone exposure. 
but there are now, including studies Carlo oversaw and that the industry approved and paid for. And this simulates exactly the type of... Clearly suggesting two potential problems, according to Carlo. Genetic damage, based on laboratory tests involving human blood, and an increased risk of a rare type of brain tumor, based on a study of brain tumor patients, although no overall increase in cancer was found. The type of tumor that is consistent uh, with the idea that it's... Uh, it it could be affected by the radiation coming from the antenna. But if these phones were so bad, wouldn't we be seeing thousands, tens of thousands of people with brain tumors right now? Not necessarily. The, the, the technology has not been around that long. Um, and uh, cancer is a disease that has a long latency period. It usually takes 10 to 15 years for tumors to develop. The industry says Carlos who started his own website with online sales of consumer manuals about cell phones, is just trying to profit from his statements. And some of Dr. Carlo's scientific colleagues, including the author on the brain tumor study, disagree with Carlo's interpretation of the findings. One of them is Dr. Martin Meltz, a scientist at the University of Texas and a paid industry consultant whom the industry said we should talk to. I believe from my perspective, that the weight of knowledge indicates safety of cell phone use. But Carlos says the new studies, while not proving cell phones are dangerous, do contradict such assurances that cell phones are safe. And that's something the industry knows? You showed them these same slides? That's correct. The cell phone industry also sought to downplay Dr. Carlos' stunning defection with this formal statement, saying, quote, the prevailing scientific consensus is that there is no evidence of risk from the use of wireless phones. No evidence of risk. Is that true? That's, is wrong. That, that's wrong. That's wrong. Have you seen this? It's actually uh, quite shocking knowing, knowing what uh, has been conveyed to them. Other scientists we checked with also took sharp exception to the industry's position about no evidence of risk. Dr. Henry Lai in Seattle studying genetic changes. Dr. Alan Preece in England, who is studying brain function changes, as well as Dr. Hardell in Sweden studying brain tumors, and Dr. Adie in California, the dean of them all. I think that's uh, a presumptuous statement. I think it's even irresponsible. Even the scientists the industry told us to talk to, Dr. Meltz, reluctantly conceded that there is some evidence that needs follow-up. There is evidence, I have to say that. Uh, now, I, I, there, there is evidence of this, whether it is valid evidence of risk or not, needs to be further examined. Yeah, big guy, how you doing? The industry says it plans more research but stands by its okay. position, okay. essentially dismissing the significance of what the man who ran its science program for the last six years has to say. Aren't you concerned when you hear those possible health effects? I have, brain tumors, genetic damage. I have to look at what the responsible scientists say. Now they're alarmed by this. And, and they say that there is not a public health effect. Who, are you they, say, who says and, that? And they say... Who actually says that? This is, this is what, they, what the FDA has said. Not exactly. When we checked the website of the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, we found a much more qualified position on cell phones. The FDA says while the available science does not demonstrate harm from cell phones, nor does it lead to the conclusion that they are absolutely safe. And I have to say to people, look, I don't know. There are no answers to what you want to know yet. So no one can reasonably say these phones are proven safe. Not at all. Not at all. The FDA now advises anyone with concerns to cut back on cell phone use or take other steps to avoid exposure. It could be, like the early days of cigarette smoking, you know, we just don't know at this stage. And, uh, and since there's 